using the moment uh, the momentary one okay. um, I've got it set on four right now which is usually enough you know for most dogs to get their attention go ahead and come on in dude I'm here we're just hanging out in here hey Dave nope. hello I'm Sue this is Blue nope. hi Blue nope so Blue is uh Blue is a little he doesn't like strangers and uh, he, it takes a second for him to get used to him. We we basically had a an entire day uh, that we needed to go through before we could really even. We had his muzzle off of him on the first day, didn't we? Um. Before we were, or no, that was the end of the second lesson. I think it was the second day. Right. Yes. Um. Yeah. But, but he uh, probably was good before then. He just hey, take. Walk. <clears throat> so we're just trying to get some good control over him. Sit. Getting him to be able to tolerate new people in here. Uh, eventually, we want to get to the point where people can approach him and touch him whenever you have tension in a dog. How are we doing? I'm good. Hi, Howdy. How are you? This is Dave. And this is uh, Dave. He's, uh, hey, Dave. My, he's my cameraman now and video okay. editor and okay. such. Okay. Excellent. Ed and Sue. So, <laughs> Clive. I like the shorts. Oh, Clive. Good work. Yeah. I thought you couldn't see me. That's why I was wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so whenever it comes down to that, we just want to, uh, we just want to be able to get, uh, we want to be able to get new people in the situation. So using the remote collar, um, we want to just communicate to him that, you know, certain things aren't wanted and, and certain things are, um, but, uh, we don't want, we don't want to wait necessarily until it gets bad. We want to start to recognize some signals from the beginning and give him the opportunity to just calm down and be a part of the situation without having to have all this anxiety and animosity and, and all of that stuff in there, which he's, he's yeah. yawning. It's a sign of stress. Oh, is that um, right? in, in case you didn't know. Uh, yeah. Yawning is, is not really the, uh, not really the, the worst thing in the world, but it's also a signal that, you know, the dog might be a little bit stressed. Um, so we, give him you give, you give him a space because there's no, it's not necessary that we hurry up and hurry the situation of inter introducing new people what sure. we want to do is, is we just want to be able to um we want him to be able to get used to being in whatever proximity that he can for a period of time until he can chill out and calm down about it we can also use um we can also use uh say what i'm gonna do I'm going to do the, do the smart thing. Because what I do. Is, that way I got all my hands. I used but, to do, uh, I used to click that onto my, uh, my backpack when mm -hmm. I'd be walking around. Hey, the love. So we can, um, we can change the situation um, and change the, uh, change his focus and his attitude towards situations. If, if we start to withhold the positive stuff and especially the high value stuff that he really likes, which we yeah. found that he likes hot dogs just fine. <laughs> And uh, we want to, we, as we go forward, we want to start holding those things off until he has the opportunity to meet and be in the presence of somebody new, because then we can get those treats reassociated with, Good things. with, with, with people showing up. So when people show up, go to my, go to your climb and you often get your treats. And, and it's only when people show up that you, you get, get your really treats. Stuff. So therefore the people become associated with something positive. Remember, we always use dopamine. Uh, that you get from food to uh, add positive association to different things. So, um, and not to mention, any time, which I'm sure I've said this before, but any time that uh, that we can add value to one thing or put place value on one thing, then we all of a sudden devalue the other things that are in the area. So if he is hyper focused on one thing, and then all of a sudden you put hot dog, and he's like, "Oh wait, wait, no, this is hot dog," and, and then that thing over there that he was hyper focused on becomes less, less important. important. Right. And and so we want to continue to have those situations to where uh, to where we can kind of control how he feels about these things. And okay. since dogs are as simple of a being as they are, you really can manipulate their brain chemistry. Uh, to to facilitate that sort of thing. Interestingly enough, you can also do that with humans too. Yeah, the, you know, and the politicians are really good. At yeah, that. yeah, I'm sure. Um, 
Uh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought you were right on the money with that one. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, 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 well, he's on. The, I'm on video now, seeing that. Right. Well, I mean, it, well, that's what you're not if, if they, on if they yeah. weren't, they probably wouldn't be politicians. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, Nobody you. goes into that career wanting to be an honest man. Or well, they may start that way. Yeah. Got some got some folks out there that are that are trying anyway. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Let's hope yeah. let's hope that they are. What are you doing about uh, I'm I'm still skeptical. Yeah. So if we can just be in the presence of I mean you can see that he's still got a little bit of he's checking over he's there just it. to see what's going on, yep. but he's still paying attention and obeying. And that's the kind of thing that we want. And we get to the point where we get to be a little hands off with the leash so that he can start making, I mean, not that he can start because we've been doing this, but he can make the decisions to, um, to contain himself right. prior to hitting the end of the leash. Because if we're just restraining the dog all the time, the dog's not actually learning anything. It's just being restrained. You know, it's like putting a crazy person in a straitjacket. It doesn't actually make them less crazy. It just keeps them from hurting people. Right. You know, so what we want to do is, uh, is we want to release us crazy people to the world so that we can find something useful to do <laughs> and train us how to deal with life. And so that's uh, that's definitely the, the same situation with dogs because dogs are animals just the same as we are. You missed it. Dave, when we first started this, like I couldn't even pick up a treat. Um, if I dropped if I dropped a hot dog on the ground, it, it, like we would have to fight over it in order to get it back. <laughs> And uh, but he's he's doing great, and this is this is number six, right? For us, I think or five. I don't six. know. I mean, we had some confusion last time whether that was four let's or call, five. Let's 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 call it let's call it five. Okay. And then uh, it, and then that way I get to come visit my boy a little bit more. Come, sit. So if you can get to the point where you get him to disregard him and turn his back on him, sit. Then, disregard humans acquire yeah. hot dogs. Disregard human acquire hot, hot dogs. Yes. That's right. Then we can then we can start to have you know we can have this situation where he is less concerned about the person coming in and more concerned about obeying properly. Right. So, um, because obeying equals hot dogs. Obeying equals hot dogs. Disobeying equals correction. Yeah. So it, it simplifies his world for him, and this is probably the first time I've said it like this. If the important part is, if I do it right, things are great. If I do it wrong, things are bad. Then it makes all of the other stuff just superfluous. It's just extra, and it's like not important. If you can simplify the world to where it's just like, no, obeying equals good and disobeying equals bad, then you're taking away all the rest of the choices, and it's like, no, I don't need to worry. It's the same way that, you know, whenever we use money as a source of currency, it's not that you have to go out and find chickens and you have to go out and find wheat and you have to go out and find a mill to mill your wheat with and all of these different things. You can just go out and find money and then go get it, you know, and whether, no, whether there's, you know, good, whether, whether there's a whole lot of progress to that um, on a moral standpoint, we, we probably won't know. But uh, as far as the behavioral, it certainly keeps people in line fairly well to have that one point of reference is like do more of this do less of this and then you can do it now of course obviously whenever you, whenever you deify any of those things then that can be a real problem but if our dog deifies hot dogs we can we can we can probably deal with that and but more than more importantly we'll, we want him to kind of deify us like we're the source of all good things we're the protector we're the we're the one who can you know who can fix things whenever they go whenever they go wrong right and then we keep that focus going and then we give him the opportunity to actually make good decisions and especially if there's no harm to be done because right. he's got his muzzle on and he uh he certainly couldn't get the muzzle off and bite somebody in the amount of time it took me to grab the leash yeah and and help him and lend him some discipline yes. you know uh so that he can get out of there so how how was that? Because um, I mean, I put we put that on, we we charged it up. Mm -hmm. He had to. Do, it wasn't working though. When For some guys. reason, it wasn't paired. Did you guys order uh, a remote and then a collar no, separately? No, it all came or together. It all came together. That's strange that it wasn't paired. But, but we didn't. We all we do is charge it. Maybe something yeah. about setting it up. Like you have to mm -hmm. pair it. I'm thinking there right. may be something. So what you have to do is is you have your um, you have your auxiliary and right. your lock there. 
right? And um, then you have the one through 10, right? What you have to do is you have to put it on the selector that you want it to be on. So right. instance, it's the black collar, I put it on the black selector and that'll be easy for you guys. And then, um, don't be nervous. Um, and so then you had to go onto the collar itself, the little button on the collar, and you had to hold it until the light turned blue and then you press the continuous button for three seconds and then it paired. Uh, there's a video, you can just, you can just video, uh, you can just go on YouTube and select pairing Garmin Sport Pro, which is what this one is. This is the Sport Pro. Um, and you can look up a video. That's how I did it. I, I, figured I, did, it's, I didn't remember off the top of my head either, you know. So, what are you doing, Bubba? Are you cranky? I'm here. Yes, that's my good boy. So, after, you know, as we go forward, our big deal is just taking this process and first of all we got to be brave enough to do it you yeah. know uh, and and i don't think that you guys are, are lacking in that area we have to be brave enough to do it we are willing to put all of our safeguards in place just to make sure that nobody gets hurt but then we need to let the actual um let the actual interactions start to happen you know dave can come in here and be around for a period of time let him cool down just like you guys have had got that to work even prior to talking to me because right. you could yeah. get him in the same room to where he was calmed down and then because you could see that he's not having as much of the you know he's not having as much of the hair standing up on the back of his neck which is just a sign of excitement it's not necessarily a sign of aggression but this dog really? is probably more along the lines of I'm anxious about the situation but uh, <laughs> yeah you breathe in hard, but uh, and then and then we can and then yeah. no, take it off. and then we can get to the point where we have the ability to actually be a little bit more, you know. No. No. We have the ability to be uh, a little bit more lax with him because the more tense we stay, the more right. we're worried about. Sure. Be worried about the thing going wrong, the worse that it's going to be. Sure. Uh, the, the more it's going to fuel his it's hard situation. To separate the emotions. So. Uh, no, it no, is. He's been, he's, been, he's been, well, better and worse, but mm -hmm. mostly better mm -hmm. in terms of the walks. Yeah, that's good. Um, you know, I'm getting, I get people slow down and talk to me and say, hey, that's really good. He just walks right with you. Mm -hmm. In other words, they're used right. to. Nope. Well, my pronouncer sees And like, watching. You know, people being dragged along by their dogs. So, right. Absolutely. So he's doing he's doing very well. Um, of course, we were gone for about ten days. So yeah. Well, he's. I mean, like he seems to be in fairly decent control. The good news is, is we'll have um, with this, you'll have the ability to really, really enforce the climb uh, or the places nice. you guys are using it. Mm -hmm. um, so, blue, place, no, place. Good point. And so now, nope, nope, place. Good point. So I just got him. I got him twice on that. Okay. And so the idea is, is you play the floor is lava, with the with the e collar. If he steps off now with him with that particular piece, um, he's going to have his feet off at yeah. some point in time. Yeah. And now it's going to get to the point where he can very easily just stand up and kind of mosey off uh, in a very nonchalant way. And now we want to keep that. We want to keep that. Um, fair to him so we we're not going to enforce every single piece of him be on that for this period of time but we want him to stay on that and so basically as soon as he gets up and tries to walk off of it then we're just nope nope and corrections and then tell him to go back and you saw that he did it he didn't stop because i made him he didn't actually even follow my body language or anything like that aside from maybe the point right. and that's good enough i mean like it's it can get better but that's good for starters, and then we start to take that away. Yeah. So free, free, good bull. That's a good one. And so we can just play this back and forth game of go to your place whenever I say so, so that the door starts to become that same deal. I'll kick your butt. That's my buddy. I've known him for a lot of years. <laughs> All right, place. Nope, place. <laughs> Nope, place. Nope, place. I can see the thing. Look so you it. see, I'm not changing as much. I'm giving him the opportunity to hear the word, yeah. mm -hmm. figure out what it is. And I'm going to help him a little bit by giving the point and everything because I, I like it. I like when dogs start to learn how to point. And it's not an easy thing for them to start with, so it's not really that much help. 
But yeah. if that's all the help that you end up giving them and they get it figured out with that, then that's great. And then you just start to take that away after some time. Free. Free. It's like, I don't know. Free. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> he's, I think so, the collar thing is it's so new to him that it's, yeah. he's, he's a little. Yeah. And, and so that, that's, where, that's where we end up having the, the success with these collars is because you can see that even though he's maybe not <laughs> in the greatest of moods. Nope. He's not in the greatest of moods. We've taken a lot of his choices away, which is allowing him, and, and he also has the extra possible stimulation right. um, to the point where it's making it very easy for him to be less concerned with the stranger in the house. Yeah. You know? Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, like just there's, be... There's a lot of things to be higher value that right. pushes that value right. down. Yeah. And so what, what we'll start doing next is, is we'll... Uh, um, what I'll ha probably have you do, Dave, is I'll have you come in here and sit right here and just keep keep videotaping. And, um, no problem, boss. And then we'll start moving him around you and giving him the opportunity to come and be cranky with you. <laughs> because Dave is my wonderful bait man. Walk. And uh, so I can, I can go ahead and whenever I'm doing something like this, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to walk past with me in between. And I'll do it like that. And then as we get more confident with it, we will, nope. Good boy. What a good dog. So I didn't correct him on that one. I just said the word. Right. But the word is developing power because right. the word always precedes the correction. So therefore, whenever I say the no, he gets the same amount of um, cortisol, the stress hor hormone, the same one that makes antelope go, <gasps> you know, like that. <laughs> that. It's the same thing. And so whenever the word becomes powerful then the word starts to be enough and then we can use, start using this less and less now you right. want to wait until you have that good sure. and solid but you know you don't want to rely on it you but always want to be prepared oh yeah he's, he's great attentive. he's doing it so excellent no always precedes well, the collar and the note yeah that's one of the keys it's if you're like using the, it's an like e collar, good, it's like the good precedes giving you see him gift. avoiding yeah yeah <laughs> It's because he knows I don't want him to mess with Dave. Um, so if, if you use an e-collar and you just correct them for arbitrary reasons without him it. having the opportunity to figure out what those reasons are, yeah. then you notice he's also taking place behind me, Yes. which is a natural thing. He's saying, no, you're the boss. You you make the decisions on whether or not we're going to fight this guy. And, uh, and my decision is no. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> because Dave is very, very, very much a good happy about that. <laughs> I must go back on the face like, I don't trust this collar. Yeah, now we have, now we have extra, <clears throat> now we have extra avoidance and he's able to do his thing. Like, I'm going to get back on the <laughs> And he's not, he's not even making an attempt, so. No, his, his attempt is, I want to try to. I'm going to get back on my place so I don't have to worry about this collar getting me. Well, anymore. and that's exactly the proper use for the place is the place is the safe spot right. where you'd never get corrections ever in under any circumstances, you don't get corrections. So what a good boy. You're so handsome. You're a handsome dog. So I'm gonna pet Dave. <laughs> and so we just spend time getting him to focus more on us right. than on anything else. And and we always have the ability to do that. Whenever we have a dog that, that has potential uh, issues of, of aggression. Nope. Nope. If, if we have a dog that has potential issues Help of aggression, we always can just nope. focus on obedience in the presence of other things to desensitize. Nope. nope. I think he's trying to get the collar off of himself. Nope. He's, well, he's starting with the muscle. But... Yeah, but he's rubbing his neck against the chair like yeah. he's trying to. Yeah, they, get they very off. often, as soon as they realize that the, the, the collar is. Or that it, there's something bothering me here. What is this? <laughs> Sit. What a good dog. Down. You did good. Free. All right. Yeah. So we can start to just get him to focus on us in the presence of other people until we can until we can start to step the engagement up and be sit even closer, you know. And then this gets to be this gets to be a, a better thing. So it's always fine to take these in very small steps. In fact, when when hey when you're when you're dealing with a dog that that has the potential for danger that he does, you know, then we want to uh, we want to make sure that uh, we don't go too fast because the idea is is we want to have as many good repetitions as we can. But 
the counterside to that is, is if we're too cautious and we don't ever get to the point to where we're giving him any exposure, then he doesn't make any progress. But he has made very, very much progress in the amount of time that we've been together, and I'm very happy with him, as well as you guys, and myself, you know, <laughs> because he's he's getting he's getting the idea, and he's definitely learning to calm down. And you can see that his position of submission to me in this situation has given him the given him the opportunity to put himself in a very non-aggressive state and he can find out that that is you know and that that's a good thing and he can get rewarded for it you know even if he does it for his own reasons or whatever but if he ends up adopting a stance that that is pleasing to us we can always pet that energy you know because because petting deals with the different chemical and it tells the dog I like the energy that you have you know, or I like the state that you're in. And he's in a very relaxed state. And so we're going to reward that. So we can continue to do that. Come on. So does the collar flicker Come. like that all the time when it's yeah, a little bit. on? Sit. Good boy. Reach out and pet him, baby. Good boy. There you go. That's a good dog. That's good. That's good. I like your coat, mister. No. That's a fancy coat. And there you go. See, he just turned away from him, even as close as he is. That's yeah. a good boy. That's he a doesn't good have boy. a fancy coat, doesn't he? Walk. And so, no, I like brindles. When we get as much as we feel is reasonable for that, you know, because you you can you can kind of feel those things of like of like, hey, we're gonna try something, and it's like, oh, we're getting away with it. We're getting away with it. We're getting away with it. I'm thinking that this is about it, and then we move on, and that's fine. Now we don't want to run away. But he just got in a position to where he had given his rear to somebody, right. which is always a great way to introduce. If the people can come by and pet him on the rear, that makes a lot of difference. And then we can always keep control of the head because the rear doesn't bite, thank, thank goodness. <laughs> so we can, we can start to expose him more and more to people and let him be approached in a minor way multiple times so that he can realize that people approaching are not, are not you know, not a bad thing, you know, and we can we can always deal with that. Is there a better place for the collar to be on his Sit. neck? Oh uh, yeah. Does it matter? Yeah, that's probably not the right place. It's kind of nope. shifting around. Which one? Good boy. <laughs> the electronic one. Yeah. You're a good dog. You're a good dog. That's very good. I was wondering if that's very good. I just put it on Wait. there to the start. No, hot dog. Well, hot dog. Yeah, good boy. Something about so, hot dog. And so, we can also, so go ahead and, go ahead and pet him. Good boy. And then you can do the same thing in the fact that you're reassociating this idea of some strangers petting me with food. It's okay. Blue. Blue. Good boy. Still not completely confident of him back there. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, but he's. But you can tell that in comparison to. I mean, like even in comparison to the last time we introduced him to somebody new, this has gone. Excuse me. Down. This has gone fantastically better. Um, well, I missed the e so. huh? oh, he came, the... Well, he didn't do it. He just didn't really do anything. He just stayed oh, on his bed. Oh, did he? Yeah. 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 He didn't yeah. try to, you know, lunge at him or Place. anything. I heard you. Good smart. boy. That's very good. That was when, that was when Luke was knocking on the front door. Because I didn't realize what time it was. And somebody was knocking on the front door. And Blue was having a cow because someone was knocking on the front door. <laughs> he didn't have that much of a cow, though. I mean, he barked, what, twice? He barked a couple. And then he kept getting, you know, I put him on his place. He kept getting up. When I would go to the door, and I had to keep going back and put him back on his place. But I didn't have his leash on, and I didn't have the stick ready, so I wasn't mm -hmm. in a good. Yeah. I wasn't well, good. he do, you did you did just fine, and um, I mean, and it also helps that uh, it also helps that he recognizes me quickly. Well, I, I mean, I knew he, that once he wasn't like place. he wasn't going to bother you. Good. He just wasn't you know staying in his place like he should be. Right now, this this becomes the tool, the the, the optimal tool for that because um, and now we can change the amount to like usually like he's responding very well to four. It's not freaking him out, but it definitely he is yes. definitely noticing it. So now when there's not strangers in his house, 
as he sees it, then that then four might not be necessary. Right. Now, if we're ever in a situation to where he is muzzle off and somebody's trying to come in and we have don't have time to go get the muzzle, then we might up it considerably after that to tell him you need to get back and give him the op give him the opportunity to do it right. Right. And then if you tell him that he needs to go to his place and he decides not to, then you might correct him with something a little bit more than four right. so that he's like, holy cow, that's a different, <laughs> that's a different experience. And I, and if that's what the level is going to be right now, then I don't want a part of it. And I'm just going to do the right thing for sure. And that's where we end up having the difference of, uh, of, uh, correction, uh, levels making a difference depending on the situation that is available. So, like, we're going out to the park, and he really needs to be listening to us. We might put it up on five and run it there. And hopefully he makes very few mistakes, so he doesn't get that. But he'll get corrected one time at some point, and then he'll be like, Oh, man, this, I'm, not, I'm not dealing with that well today, and, like, I better pay close attention. And then so by being more stern, then we end up getting greater obedience, and we actually correct them less in the long run. So we don't do them any favors by being overly gentle with them sure nor and, by overusing it right, right. yeah so the so, idea of the extra level is to keep you from having to correct them more right so so if i'm walking mm -hmm. with him and begin to bring that along with me mm -hmm. then instead of the stick you know i can just use i could use the electronic if he's not backing up then exactly yeah up, so and then he gets backed up but but how often i mean that's that's going to be the thing is what you're going to use this for is more direct refusal okay so when we're walking and he gets a little bit up front uh, up front of you yeah it is kind of one of his natural instincts sure. it's an easy thing for him to mess up it doesn't necessarily mean now once they get to the point where they absolutely know for sure that they're not supposed to be up in front of you and they and when we they have the ability to do that a hundred percent and then he's still doing it, then any color correction is a little bit more of a, uh, a reasonable thing to do. But this is going to be more for direct, like you know that you're doing something it's a wrong. It's rebellion, more like a, with a kid. Yeah. It's a rebellion, right. not doing... Okay. You're, you're using the e-collar less, um, less for teaching things like the first that. time because there's no because these things aren't directional. Right. They can't give any... Whereas if he, I want him to learn that he needs to put his feet up here I can I can get him back up there and it's directional what? It, but um, if I were just to sit here and press the button until he pulled his no feet idea. up on there he wouldn't he'd never get it and then then we're getting to the point where it's abusive to the dog sure. for the sake that they don't have the ability to figure it out. Right. So um, that's where that's the way I like to use e-collars. It's not a teaching tool. It's an enforcing tool. And generally, by the time you get to the point where it's taught and it's enforceable, you add the e-collar to it, and then they're just like, "Nope, I'm just doing it right." Like I don't like that, you know. And it doesn't hurt them. Right. It like it's it's not a huge big deal, mm -hmm. but it is unpleasant for sure. Like right. it's not it's not the thing that they want. And then we have the ability to have that negative re the, sure. the negative threat out there i suppose you could call it that will prevent something like this because the last time we introduced which was only two lessons ago this was not possible like we, we weren't we weren't really uh, well i mean i suppose we got a little bit of it yeah. but not it, but it but it really emphasizes because at this point i just have no work like i can i can come over here and i can just come back and stand behind dave and i don't think that Blue is coming after Dave. No. I'm gonna turn my back to him. I mean, you know, Blue is pretty consistent. Once he reckon, you know, once he meets come. someone, he doesn't get bothered by them come. again. Come, Blue. He's come. It's like what was he? Blue, come. There you go. Now you got it. I think something's in the vein with him. <laughs> he didn't understand. Uh, I, I vibrated the collar. Oh, so okay. what I like to do with the with the extra tools down. That wasn't a shock down. or whatever it was a down. <laughs> down. He's confused. Yeah, so he's confused. Very confused. Down. Good boy. So what I like to do is I like to I just did an example of both of the two tools that I like to use these for. I don't use these things as warnings, which some people do, because my warning is the word no. 
Right. And so I don't need to give him one morning that says no, and then the one morning that's a tone, and then one morning that's a vibrate, and then the dog ends up finding out that I get to disobey for a good period of time before yeah. it becomes. It's just, you get your one warning, and it's not even a warning, it's more of a communication. That's not what I want, and then right. you should be obeying promptly thereafter. And then if you don't, then you go straight to a correction. And when doing that, by skipping all of the warning steps, you end up having a greater obedience anyway, because sure. the dog, whenever you say no, the dog's like, oh shoot, I better pay attention. And um, and then they just get corrected less. Whereas if you do all the step ups, then you're just gonna have more offenses, more offenses, more offenses. And that's going to keep you in a different state of mind and a different state of anxiety, which we definitely don't want, especially with an aggressive dog. We want to be as calm and fine with the situation as we can possibly be at all moments. And if you're constantly frustrated with the dog, he's right. gonna assume some of the time that you're frustrated with whoever's approaching. Yeah. And then he, he will do his very best to protect you, which he thinks he's doing the right thing. We just stepped in, saying, no, that's not it. So so he was, he's, he's right now, he's hesitant to even do anything other than sit on his place. Well, I mean, I, I put him in the down. Was that buzz? Is so that tone, you can make it, just make a tone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this button right here the is, on the right. is, is a tone. And the other one is like this, a vibrate? This one is a vibrate. Is that what you did when yeah. he was sitting over there and didn't come? Mm -hmm. You did the, the yeah, buzz. Yeah, so like I the... use vibrate to mean come to me. That's, that's always the case. And so I always, that's the only thing I use that for. And that's always what I use it for. So if I vibrate the dog, the, the collar, mm -hmm. then the dog automatically knows, find you, find the owner, you know, like find the person who's handling me right now and go to them. And I don't punish them if they pick the wrong person. That's fine. You know, I mean, it's sometimes you'll get that vibration and they will, they will back themselves up next to the person that is, that, they're, that you're trying to keep them from biting. And at that point you just go, Oh, okay. That's. We can live with that, you know, because now, so, but it always means come to me. Person. Yeah, come, come to your handler and, and, um, you know, and then you'll be, then you'll be fine. So I'm going to sh show you what the, here, actually, you, you can just go ahead and touch it. And I'll show you what. It vibrates. That's the vibrate. You can mm -hmm. kind of hear it. Yeah. yeah. He's like, what are you doing to me? Sorry, Bubba. <laughs> Good boy. So that's all it is. And then of course the beep. And that's the sound. Yeah. And the sound so is I just use, to get his attention or what? No, the beep I generally use to mean lay down. I mean you need to lay down and lay down now. Which is a great thing for especially for an aggressive dog is, is if the dog um, is in a situation where they're starting to get too tense like that, and then you beep and it's enough of a sound that it's they're like, okay. Yeah. And it's also real high pitched, so it's easy for them to hear in those moments. Okay. Which is why they use such a high pitched tone. Um, I would assume anyway, that's, yeah. a, that's a guess as much as anything, but it seems to work. Um, and that, and hopefully we can continue to, um, uh, get the dog to beep. So, so beep means lay down and you do that simply free. <laughs> Come on. Free. It's like, I don't want to move now. I'm afraid Good I'm going to get. Yeah. Well, and he'll, nope. He'll need to down. Nope. Down. Good boy. There you go. And then we start to take our opportunities whenever we're teaching something new is when we use treats. Mm -hmm. And also whenever we're trying to put a positive spin on a certain situation. So this would be an opportunity for me to treat him whenever he lays down after the beat. Free. Come here. Good boy. Down. No. Good. And so if we have our marker, our good marker, right? We don't have, we can take our time to get the treats there. But the, the, the quicker we get the treat there, the more he's going to be like, oh, as soon as I get so down, right. I can have my treat. So, come. Down. Good. So you see how I, be careful with my finger, buddy. Um, so you see how I beeped and then I waited for uh, just a split second, and then I gave him the down command. It's like yeah. I want him to, to see I want him to start figuring that that yeah. the beep comes before me telling him down. And then if I keep doing that, then then um, he will start to understand. He will start to predict me is what'll happen. He'll start uh -huh. to say he'll hear that beep, and he'll just go ahead and lay down. And then I'll skip telling him down and just go straight to good, and you get your treat. Come. See three repetitions? Wow. He caught that on camera. 
<laughs> that was the first time we tried it, is it not? Yes. Yeah. That's how quick these things happen if you follow the right process right. and if you're willing to give it a little bit of time. You're right. a good boy. Free. All right. Free. Yeah, that's a good dog. So then, so we, we can turn the vibrate into a recall command. Come. No. Come. <laughs> Good. All right. So you've been you were doing yeah. vibrate. Yeah, I did three vibrates in that situation. I said I said vibrate and then come, and he goes huh, and then I then I vibrated it again, said come, and he ran to his thing <laughs> that didn't give him a treat either. And then I helped him a little bit more. I vibrated him and brought him to me. You know, and each time he did it wrong, I said no, and then followed through with a new command. And, uh, and gave him the opportunity to do it again. Right. Now, the third situation was the one that worked. And so hopefully we can make it a little less difficult for him and I can start to just vibrate and then move. Good. <laughs> yeah. So those were both vibrates. Prior to me, like I vibrated as soon as I started backing up. Good boy. dinner <laughs> when we have a leash we don't necessarily need to issue the command right. uh -huh. watch it dude nope nope <laughs> nope come i accidentally vibrated so i need to, <laughs> I need to follow through i need to i need to act yeah. as if the thing the, the message he got is the proper it's one it's hard to I'm, I, it's hard to be consistent mm -hmm. i mean i think for the owner. Nope. Sit. The, to remember to be nope. consistent. Nope. Sit. Good boy. Come. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come. Good. Nope. So I haven't vibrated yet. No. Come. So we can continue to polish this exercise and we can do it outside. Come. There you go. Good boy. We can do it outside where we got a lot more space. We can use the 20 footer so that we have more time in between when we issue the command. Free. Right. When we issue the command and when we, um, when he actually gets the help, no. Nope. You see how effective the, the no keeps being. And that's just a matter of repetition. We only have just a few tools, but if we continue to keep ourselves consistent in our usage of the tools and how we behave after them, whenever I say no, I'm watching for the behavior to stop. And if the behavior stops, then no correction. If the behavior doesn't stop correction, every single time, you know, it seems like no mercy, but it is actually a mercy to him in the fact that I'm not going to let my feelings make things confusing for you to where you get corrected more often. Right. Right. And uh, I know you guys understand this principle. Just, it, yes. just always good to, always good to reinforce that thing. It really is. Come. That's a good boy. Sit. Good. He he always runs clear into me with his muzzle. <laughs> Whenever he comes, he comes all the way up, pushes on me, then sits. And I don't know why he does that. And it's okay. You're a good boy. Free. Free. All right. Nope. So as we continue to go further in this situation, and especially whenever you got the muzzle on, you can give him the opportunity to be a little bit more friendly. Um, and if something happens, I mean, you generally don't, like, you wouldn't do this with kids. I mean, like, a person who works for a dog trainer is a great place to start. You know, your neighbor who is not afraid of the dog mm -hmm. is another great place to start. And uh, family members who aren't going to get rid of you if, uh, you know, get rid of you if the dog muzzle punches them, you know. <laughs> and, and then we keep building up and building up. And then eventually, after that continues to happen, and whenever he starts to see people, you see that, you know, that happy-go-lucky, oh boy, here come here come folks for to pet me and my hot dog treats are coming now because people have come in the door. Then we start to get to the point where we 
then, then we want to carefully, with the control of the head, start introducing people on the backside. And then later on, we just start going places. And I mean, like, and it's just a step up thing. And you can take the steps as slow as you want, you know, but. Uh, but we down to keep, continue to get do yeah. more. Continue yeah, you want. To, more, to do more. Yeah, reach out and pat him, Dave. Good boy. Good. And so whenever I can tell him good, he starts to understand that you letting this guy pet him good is that's the thing and that's what nope good boy and so whenever he's going over there and looking with any sort of any sort of intensity then i will just tell him no and then he can understand that that's the thing that i'm telling him no for and because he understands what no means he's you know he can start to he can start to realize the micro action that is making me wrong you're making him wrong he, he realizes that as long as good, as long as I continue to be reasonable. Did we drop it? It's in his basket there. <laughs> it's, on it's on top of your nose. nose. <laughs> there you go. Now you got it. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. he's, he's gotten to the point where he understands that he's let no. Nicely. Thank you. Good boy. Come. 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 So, nope. <laughs> He's like, I want more treats. Look at that. That's a good boy. What a good dog he is. So. Now, is that from your command? Huh? No. Oh, no, he did that on his own. I told him free, and he chose to go back to this position and let Dave, you know, and take the position where he tends to get more hot dogs. Yes, yeah, so that's what I'm thinking. He's thinking hot dogs. I mean, and, and that's fine if that gets him to the point to where he can start to get away with, good boy, what a good dog. She's like, no. I'm... If he gets to the point to where he can become exposed to the idea that these strangers pet me and they give me this pleasant feeling of oxytocin which is a which is an anti-anxiety chemical in general right. then he, he can start to understand that there is a positivity on the other side of this wall that i've been hiding behind right. you know um and so then he gets the opportunity to, to experience a little bit of life and see that there's good things to be had out of these strangers right. these strangers aren't just people that are coming in to take my home and hurt my family right. they're uh you know they're they're good people and they want they just want to love on me they generally come attached with hot dogs for some odd reason you know i don't understand why that happens but then sometimes they they get to the point where they 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 show up and hot dogs always seem to show up at the same time so now i'm realizing that my owners are rewarding me for good calm behavior around strangers you good boy yes you are what come here bub what are you doing? Come here. Here. Come here. So many people in the house. He's not used to it. Just my good job. And then all the more touching and ruffling around and everything that he can deal with is all the better. You know, yeah. Because oxytocin, which we get from physical contact, is the healing chemical in when we're dealing with these situations. The more a dog can get pet. I mean, like this seems like a, this is an oversimplification, but the more yeah. a dog can get pet, the the uh, and by the more amount of people, the more he's going to realize that hey, life is a pretty darn good place where everybody is pretty good to me all the time. And whenever if if I was wandering around with that feeling, which by and large I am, <laughs> then it would make it so much easier for me to stay relaxed on a daily basis. And when somebody comes up and they're having a grumpy day, maybe they're constipated or something like that, <laughs> and they have this grumpy look on their face, I don't have to go, man, that person might hurt me. I need to hurry up and punch them. I, I get to say, hey, buddy, you look like you're having a rough day. Something I can do for you, you know, and then we can be better. And, and that's the same, that's the anthropomorphic um, step up for the dog. But, you know, we can just think about it in the same way. It's like if he continuously feels like new people mean hot dogs and pets, okay. and I don't have to bite them anymore. I don't have to go through all that work to keep That's these stress. people out the door anymore. <laughs> Man, what a good life. And then he just gets to be happy about these things. And it's something that happens over time, but it's not, it's not nearly as much time as you think. Hmm. Well, he's he, certainly adjusted know, he's significantly nails. over the last couple of months. Yeah. He's a great dog. He just had misconceptions. He yes. just thought 
you know, he just thought that, you know, that people were monsters. That wow, people he had were to protect were, us from the strangers. Right. Well, he didn't, he didn't Stranger know. danger. He picked right. that. That's, yeah. That was his theme. No. Yeah, that's exactly it. And and more so, like I don't want strangers to come into my house, which is not the worst thing. Like if you guys aren't here and he still does it, good for I him. How we would behave with someone else? Yeah. Well, we don't. I mean, like that's one of those things. Excuse me. You know, that's one of those things that if you want that to be the case, that he lets people in the house when you're not here, which. I don't, I, I've, I've met, met very few people where that's a necessary thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know? we're not planning on making that a necessary thing. I would hate to... And especially people that he's never met before. I mean, well, like, I that. could probably come in the house. Right. Yes, people he's met. At this point. Um, but Dave probably couldn't at this point, and that's fine, because Dave doesn't need to be in your house if you guys aren't here. You know? <laughs> I don't either. I just happen to be the one that, you know, went through this process... Right. With him, and, and he would be him. comfortable. He, he wouldn't be bothered by it. Right. He barked, and so if something comes like, up oh. and you need and you need somebody to get in the house and you guys are out of town and everything, call me, and I will I will I, I will can't deliver see us whatever. Leaving it is. blue, um, here, you know, I don't know. Well, I mean, you know, if you went to Columbia or something maybe for, the, so. Um, for the day. So how can you ever tell when it's okay, like to take the muzzle off and relax? Like when you have someone like say, you know, Dave's here or whomever. Like, Well, we could totally take the muzzle off at this point right now. What we would want to do is, is we want to be more on top vigilant. of the situation. I'm, just, I, I'm going to personally say that we're going to save that for the very end or another visit okay. um, for Dave's sake. Because, I mean, like, Dave's, like Dave's been working with me for a whole, what, four days now in, 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 actual, in actual work time. So uh, It's like when my sister and her husband came. We just kept the muzzle on the whole time. They were here for a couple hours, mm -hmm. three hours, something like that. So, and he was fine. Like, we're eating in there, and he was just lying on the ground next to Eddie's chair. Mm -hmm. But we still kept the muzzle on him. Right. I mean. Well, that's perfectly fine for a while. And, but, like, my daughter and her boyfriend are coming. You know, he knows Kelly, and he'll be, oh, so happy to see Kelly. But he's never met um, Byron before. So, they're going to be here for a weekend. So, I'm just. So, during that weekend, what you do is you leave the muzzle on him for the first, I don't know, half day. Yeah. Or a few hours, or something evening. like that, right. and and you continue to go through this process. Right. Yeah, it's um, like... and, and and then eventually you'll get to this point where he's you know chumming up with people like he did right. with Dave, right. and yeah. and then and then at that point you're probably going to be pretty darn good. Now I can't guarantee well, any of these things as like... always because yeah. you know he's his own being. I've never seen him decision. regress. Like once he's met someone, he's usually and he's fine with them. I've never seen him. Mm -hmm. Go back. Go back. Right. Right. But we haven't, you know, um, but it's like when my brother-in-law visited and we were in Chesapeake and the first evening we kept them separate. Mm -hmm. But by the next morning, I mean, spent fine. the night, he was fine. I mean, mm -hmm. we never muzzled for him then. So we just right. literally kept him in the bedroom with us. And then, but he tried to get in to visit Brett, <laughs> kept trying to get in the bedroom to visit Brett and sniff him. Mm hmm but then he was fine with him once he'd, you know, had been a few hours. Mm -hmm. So it's like once he realizes they're not a threat, mm -hmm. it's just that initial right. problem. And the muzzle makes Come us on. feel a lot more secure, hey. for sure. No. You can go on now. Yeah. Go, go snuggle with Dave. No. Come here, Blue. <laughs> You're a big baby is what you are. Big yes. baby. Oh. baby. And, that's, and that's the case with most, with most aggressive dogs. You know, not not aggressive dogs, but dogs that exhibit aggressive behaviors. Because right. I don't believe that the dog is aggressive; his behavior is. Yeah, he's so, not. Um, like the kennel, he was not aggressive. Usually, at all. once they get past that anxiety, which is the key, that's right. why some trainers don't have any luck, is they don't identify this as anxiety in total. Once they get past the anxiety, and they say, "Oh, okay, everything is good," and they generally are like, they turn into big babies, right. and they want to get right up underneath you. Because I mean, you saw the very first time that we were off muzzle with him and everything he kissed me right in the face right you know and the and prior to that nope. he was nope nope prior to that he was um he Go was you know trying to bite my neck <laughs> so i mean like he i would have been his nope. Nope. i would have been his first second and 26th bite right. in that same day if we didn't have muzzle on the first day and then day then day two we got kisses on the face right you know, and that that's that's the way it happens a lot of the time, and a lot of the time people want to. Come here, you're all tangled up here, Blue. Come here. Where'd you guys get him? Come here. Um, we got him at the um, rescue for like the Isle of Wight County. Yeah, yeah. Animal, animal animal control, control for basically. Isle of Wight County. Yeah. So in Virginia. Yeah. 
Yeah. You've been um, no. not quite a year old no. at that point. I think it was too much for the people that had him. Well, Who'd but have thought? I mean, they Who'd were splitting thought? up. Their family was splitting right. up through a divorce or separation kind of situation, so they couldn't keep him. They couldn't keep him. Mm -hmm. And he was, I mean, like when he first. What? He didn't have any of those, you know, defensive tendencies when we first got him. Right. Like a year. Well, the isolation will definitely do it. I mean, like, and that's what happens with most uh, uh, dogs that develop aggressive issues is they. They show a little bit of a sign, a sign once, and then they, they, then all of a sudden everybody gets super anxious about them, and then they keep them separated for any length of time, and then the dog goes long periods of time without seeing new strange people, the people that the, he needs to become good with, and then that just continues to compound and compound, which um, I mean, like, and I'm glad that we. I'm glad that you got a hold of me in this situation, yeah. uh, it, because I mean, it had been what seven years, right? Something like that. Yeah, six or seven, just, six or seven years that you guys six. have that you guys were just managing him really well, you know, and keeping him out of trouble. And now we now we have the opportunity in just a matter of a short period of time to, yeah. I mean, to get this in the presence of strange people. So. Right. No, you're not strange. No. <laughs> well, I mean, we're definitely strange. If if any two people in the world are strange, it's me and Dave, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with being strange. No, there's not. <clears throat> Thank goodness. If you're not be in real trouble. If you're if you're not a little bit strange, then I wonder about you. <laughs> so. Okay, so we need but, to practice the e collar. Right. The e collars and the e collar actually helps them settle down. Right. And and it seems strange. Let's you know, I want to get you settled down so I'm going to give you I'm a, going to I'm going to give you electricity in your system. Right. And that seems counterintuitive, of course, but the same thing is like people smoke a cigarette and it causes them to calm down a lot of the time and that's because it's stimulating. Right. Stimulation uh stimulants tend to cause the adrenal glands to go off and the adrenal glands let the brain catch up with the situation and make it seem a little bit slower. Now, um, Nikola Tesla, who I share a birthday with, did that with electricity. He would get up in the morning instead of having his coffee, he would shock himself and it would no, cause he was the strange. There's someone who was strange. Well, he is strange, but he's the reason we have cell phones and wireless it's charging yes. and it's yeah. Strange. And in really a hundred years before we actually ever made any of it happen, he's he's the sole reason for that. And that's because he he just thought about things differently. He looked at the actual reason, like the root behind everything. Um, he's just a fascinating man. But you get to the point to where you can catch up with life. You can get your brain ahead of life when your adrenaline gland starts going off. That's why you can fight better. It's why you can do everything better. You can make sure that you keep calm in a situation where you really should not be calm. Because if you're in a fight, the calm one wins. Pretty much always. It, um, I, if you want validation of that, then watch the, the dog attack on my Facebook page that we just posted up yesterday is when the dog attacked me. Oh, and no. Uh, I, no, it's, it's fine. Um, it, he, I, I came out completely unscathed and it was a dog as big as him, pretty much. Um, it was a Bernese mountain dog and German uh -huh. shepherd mix, I believe. Wow. And, uh, he was probably 75, 80 pounds, uh, of, of, uh, territorial dog. And, uh, he decided he was coming after all different parts of me in the same way that he did, uh -huh. except for this one didn't have a muzzle on. And so I had to, wow. I had to keep myself very calm through that process and make a lot of really good decisions. Cause we figured, what did we figure? Uh, 14 attempted bites in five seconds that he tried and I That's came out. That's pretty impressive. He came yeah. out of skates. Dude, I'm, I'm proud of myself. I'm not going to lie. Uh, well, you've had a few practice sessions. Is that supposed to be yeah. Still? It is. Oh. Yeah. So, um. But that's the deal. It's the calm, and so whenever you whenever you stimulate them, it it, it probably causes well, it definitely causes the adrenaline gland to go off, and I think it also will cause uh, norepinephrine, which is okay. another um, it's it's another neurochemical that um, I don't know as much about, but it does have a tendency to um, stimulate you a little bit and let right. you catch up with things. Right, um, but it, in any it, case, it, it gets him to shift his attention to mm -hmm. what he's supposed to do. Right. Yeah. And I do know that norepinephrine is used uh, in uh, used as an anti-anxiety medicine huh. um, that wow. you can give people synthetic norepinephrine, and it will um, it so will cause that. That's what um, that's how uh, what's it called? I'm trying to think of the name of that uh, that um. 
He's fine. He's just... So you can look at the ears whenever you're dealing with a dog that you're worried about and everything. Mm -hmm. Whenever you see the ears start to go up and forward, that's intensity. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's intensity. If they're back and relaxed, um, then that's generally, that's generally submission. Now, what you want to watch for is whenever his ears, like to be perfectly honest, I could probably cause a problem. If his ears pin like straight flat back on, onto his back like that, <coughs> right. then, um, <coughs> then that's, that's, then that's the, the real one that you want to look at, uh, you want to look for. And so you can kind of tell how the dog's feeling. He's got, he's got a fairly, you know, a fairly relaxed position. He's got no, um, standing of the, of the hair on his back. He's not unreasonably tense in the situation. He's <laughs> a good boy. He's confused by that nope. stick, I think. Where nope. What is good that boy. Thing? What a good boy. But you see, now I'm sure that that made you tense. I mean, yeah, if it really didn't, you're tense. representing yourself uh, poorly because you look pretty tense at the moment. <laughs> right. Well, not right now, but it's right. like when we were at the kennel and when we brought Blue there the first time, the lady just squatted down. I'm sorry I don't have any hot dogs for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and it made us anxious because she squatted down and her face was right in Blue's face. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have muzzle on. Right. Um, but he was like totally like not in his um, mm -hmm. aggressive. He wasn't, you know. He's just like in a completely different frame of mind when he's yeah. in someone else's place. Well, well, right. plus, but, plus but she unlike, was unlike the the lady in in Lowe's, mm -hmm. the right? Incident. She, she was manic about it. Well, she, but she also in. leaned in like this, where this lady here, I mean, she just kept her body straight mm -hmm. and came right down. And she was very good and, right. and, and interacted with him. Um, well, most professionals will understand that you have this you have this defensive plane. Generally, in general, and this is not a guarantee, but in general, if you want to minimize the, uh, the likelihood of a dog biting you, what you want to do is you want to have nothing particularly closer to the dog than anything else. Right. And when, when you watch that, if you watch that video on the Facebook and the YouTube about me getting attacked, uh -huh. you can see that I actually bait the dog with my hand uh -huh. um, and don't tell my wife about that. But I bait the dog with my hand and everything to get him off of my foot because he grabbed a hold of my foot. Um, and he actually he actually got that, but he wasn't biting the hurt. So that's that was just lucky on huh. my part. That yeah. wasn't skill. Um, but so in order to get him off my foot, I presented him with the hand, and he saw the hand come up, and then he left to go bite the hand, and I pulled it away because you know with, you were fast enough because it was fast enough and everything. Uh -huh. And then you see me. You see me, him going and switching between my legs as the dog is coming after me, trying to attack each leg with every step that I'm taking backwards so I can make space for myself. And so that's one thing that you can understand is the dog will always bite the closest place. So if you present yourself straight up and down, then there is no obvious place to bite. Well, people seem to think they're putting their hands out to the dog for them to sniff was a good idea. And I read that that mm. wasn't a good idea. Well, it's a horrible idea. Well, that's no. what, why if do you do that? Come here. Come here. Come. Come. So if I'm, if I'm wanting to approach a dog, the, the, the best option is just to come to the dog and present my hand up underneath. Because if you think about it, with the, the hand coming in to pet over the top, that's nerve wracking. Whereas this right here, every, every animal understands that this is non-threatening. Huh. You know, and so if I have the opportunity, I can come straight down and I can and I can present my hand low. So that way, if he's going to go for it, generally, he's going to put himself in a more submissive posture or he can step up to me and everything. And I can have the ability to kind of pat him up underneath the chin. Also pushing the chin up. It's just like um, in humans, if we if we spend all day standing around like this and everything, we will become very depressed people and lack and will have a lack of confidence. Whereas if we change our posture and we stand up, chin back to the chest, head up, shoulders back and down and everything, if we stand in this posture, our brain quite literally produces more serotonin. Hmm. Uh, and serotonin is a confidence chemical. Confidence is what we want for a nervous dog is we want them to feel more confident even if it's artificially. But if you stand, like most of the time when, before I go into lessons, I'll tell you, it's I will, get out of the car and stretch it out. And I will make sure that whenever I enter the door, I enter as, as head up as I possibly can be because it helps me deal with 
any anxiety I might have meeting new people, meeting new dogs, so on and so forth. And if I posture myself like this and I ignore the dog and I keep myself upright, I tend to be very confident and it tends to make the dog even more secure in the situation because they're like, oh no, this person isn't squirrely. Like they're very upstanding mm -hmm. and they're not focused on me at all. So maybe I'll just leave them alone for a minute because they look pretty strong too. You know, they look very confident. So uh, maybe I don't want to fight with them and I don't think that they're trying to hurt me. But we can do the same thing with the dog, is if they're having a situation to where, come here. Come on. if they're having a situation to where their head down, then we want to pull their head up and pet them up underneath, and they're like, oh man, I'm this big dog, you know, and and I'm I'm, I'm you know, I've, I've got everything that I need. I feel really good about myself. That's why they also make dogs whenever they're whenever they're doing this. See. Oh, oh, and they... for for competition. Oh yeah, I always make, I thought they were just to show off their. It is well, it is it is, but it's a secondary benefit. It is the fact that whenever you have confidence. those dogs, they tend to keep their spine hyper arched and they t keep their heads up, they keep their tails up, which tends to produce a greater amount of confidence and thus less reactivity. Oh, okay. Over the course of time, and then dogs that pro place really well, they can have that fully arched, you know, like a, yeah. like a bodybuilder flexing of <laughs> and everything that, that kind of stance, those dogs tend to maintain a better temperament over the course of life, thus making their breeding rights more valuable. So interesting little, Side little tidbits, but things that we're not going to worry about. Yeah. What are you doing, Bubba? You're a good boy. You're free. I think you're free anyway. <clears throat> it's funny. Sometimes he just, and when you're doing so, that, when he's sitting there and he's gotten a treat for sitting mm -hmm. there then you say free. And he just wants to sit there and get another treat. Get another treat. <laughs> right. Well, and, and that's one of those things you don't give him. If it's not what you intended, yeah, we don't, then no, just because don't he's trying to do something right doesn't mean that he gets it. Yeah. If you accidentally do something right, you get the treat. If you do it right on purpose, you get the treat. If you accidentally do it wrong, you get corrected. If you do it wrong on purpose, you get corrected. And it, by being black and white like that, we actually make it easier for the dog and they tend to be less anxious. And that's, that's what we're trying to get with him. Do you want to take a spin real quick outside sure. and just move about a little bit outside and then hopefully... Do you want the bigger leash or just your six-foot you know six leash? I think we're probably going... Yeah, let's do the bigger leash and then let's just... We're going to drop it a little bit uh, yeah. and let him kind of do his own thing. Continue to... I'm fine with that. I'm much fine. Because it's not... Really still watch. Watch. Yeah. Yeah. So, everybody go out. Oh. Nope. Nope. Free. All right. Come on, Bob. Come on, Good job. You guys are wearing the same jacket. <laughs> are you gonna make friends with all the dogs in the neighborhood? Have you met me? Yeah, <laughs> that is kind of your MO. That's a cool looking dog. Yeah, he's cool. But you Look. can see. Blue has capacity for the blue lock. He's got a, a little bit more red brand over here. Oh. Is that the one with two doors down? That's always that bark that's going to go by? He's a good dog. Do you like hot dogs too? Yeah. He's looking for more on the ground. Yeah, he's, he's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> he's a dog. So let's just go ahead and go. Now here's our FedEx guy. Oh, great. Blue. Down. Down. No. I hate sitting on concrete. Down. 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 <laughs> Down. Like, get it off me. No. No. <coughs> so, we can have this. 
And so by having the extra tools in place, we yeah. actually get the opportunity to let more happen. Right. And so now he gets to see FedEx guy come over here. And um, we can be friendly with him, we can address him, we can stand out here and turn our back on him so that he knows that we're not worried about this FedEx guy. Right. And then we can go ahead and move on and uh, let him know that, you know, we all things are well. Nope. And to the very best of our ability, we'll keep him under control, but we have we have two safeguards. Number one, we can step on the lead, which is probably our first one. And then number two, we also have the end column. We can turn all the way up to 10 if we need to. Yeah, I know. Surgery? Yeah, it's more than that. Get to oh. stuff out. Yeah. No, he, well, he barked and blew sticks right on over there, and that came over and threw him some hot dogs, and he quit barking. So. Yeah, nice later hosing. <laughs> I want some camo later hosing. <laughs> Absolutely possible. It's not even. It's not even improbable. Look. Right. Thank you. It's not even improbable. It, it's. It's just a matter of you got to give them a little bit. Hey. Hey. It's nothing else. So if we have no other choice, then we can correct him. But you notice, if I slow down, he slows down. Yeah. So we get to the point that where even though he is a little bit ahead, yeah. It's he's not still, the end of the world because he's, he's oh yeah he's still paying attention to you right he's um, he, he's he's letting he's letting leader. me decide the direction right so we got a dog over here in this yard and he'll leave that one alone and i'm sure we'll run across some other things so, luke he does pretty well in leaving other guys alone <clears throat> but it's actually i think it's energy based Sit. Nope. Sit. Nope. Sit. Good boy. I don't care if they lay down whenever I tell them to sit. Blue. Hey. Walk. No. Good boy. 
good. There you go. That's very good. Yeah. So just just as if I was teaching him a first time exercise. Now he's like, oh, okay. You know, and we can treat this just the same as the place. You know, and I happen to use the word climb. It's all. It, mm -hmm. They're all just sounds. So. Get out of the Oh, this is the dead end, isn't it? Yeah, to get in there. But so we can go down to the lake if you want, which is down to the right. It doesn't matter. Okay. We're probably getting getting on to the end. I just wanted to go. Because we got the, I got to get back. Yeah, it is. It is worth it. Okay. Back. Good boy. And so, hey. well, if he jumps, he just doesn't get it. <laughs> Whenever he sits there and waits for me down. Blue. I always like to pull to the yeah. side of the street and sit. Oh, right. Oh, I you remember that. Walk. So, come on. And then once we've got safety in place, we've got a little bit of recognition. We have some understanding. Nope. Like five is not fun, but I mean like, like I probably, whenever I go to do my video where I'm going to have them put the e-collar on me and then I'm going to give a speech that I normally give and I'm going to try not to say um <laughs> or any filler word. <laughs> Come. You do that a lot, so that's going to be really fun for me. Right. I think it's fine. Hey, look at the front of the bathroom. Nope. Nope. Like, nope. Come. Wonderful so the, so, so the, uh, the tone. So I'll probably, what I was saying is I'll probably use five for that. So, so the, the tone when you're using that thing is for lay down. That, you can be whatever you want. It. Right, but, but I mean, that makes sense. If that's what you're using, yeah. the, the work for us and the buzz, and the, and down. the buzz is to come. Down. Nope. Down. Down. up a little bit and we're going to assume that he's not going to do it. I can step, I can step on the leaves depending on the right. hey. And this is his house. Bathroom. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. Fine. I would rather though, in this, in this situation, because we know he's got to go to the bathroom, that's fine, but in general, what I would rather happen is uh, he can stop to go to the bathroom when I'm done. Yeah. You know, and, and that, that's me, that's, that's a matter, that's a rule you're welcome to you're welcome to let go of if you want to. But like when we're walking, it's time to walk. Yeah. And whenever we're climbing, it's time to climb. Yeah. You know, whenever we're free, you can climb. Hey. Okay. Now. It's an hour afternoon. The same, the same thing. Momentary is just a 26th of a second on this collar. Uh -huh. And then continuous, though, will run as long as you hold it for up to 12 seconds. Nope. Nope. So if he's not if he's if he's not paying attention to it, uh -huh. you can see he's like he just got it twice and he's prancing along. He's like, I know I'm home. Yeah, you still gotta listen. And then we, you know, uh, so if you need to jump up real quick and something happens and you haven't had the time to adjust it, you can go to the continuous and hold that, and that will seem like quite a bit more, and it might stop him, whereas the momentary would. Um, oh. Yeah, it, it will. But it still is different. He totally just took that on the seven. 
Unless there's something going wrong with the collar, which I don't think there is. He's tucked up. <laughs> so don't don't worry about it. Yeah. Like I know I know it's a bummer, especially trying to, you know, put you know, trying to put all these uh these uncomfortable things on your dog. But if it's a matter of them not having that uh, you know, having that needle go in, then yeah. that's it's worth it. You know, and the thing about it is like you can see he's not upset. Like no. not in the least. He's just like, no, that, he okay. Just, Dogs don't really keep grudges. Like they don't really get stirred up about stuff like that. Uh, and especially whenever they can't assume very clearly who did it. You know, if I punched him in the face, he would probably try to bite me every time he saw me for a while. Right. But if I if I continue to correct him with the e collar, he might want to avoid me. But he's not going to say, "Hey, this guy is the one correcting me." Necessarily. Um, and even if he does understand that that's the case, he's not necessarily going to treat it as if it's the case. It's like when I'm around him, the rules are different and the rules correct me, not the person. And, and so that, if that helps you, helps you feel better about it, because one of the biggest problems that I have as a trainer is getting people to be willing to push the button when it's necessary. And then you, of course, have some of the people that just want to push the button until the dog's good. And that's also not the right answer. It's a matter of balance. Know, it's a skill. That's good. It's a skill that will take some practice. Well, that's why I always teach you guys how to do the obedience first and, and correct with the leash first and use the markers properly and all of that stuff so that whenever this comes around, you already have the skill. And so you don't have to learn both at the same time. Um, and, and so this is just one more thing to add on. And then when we get done with it, we have a good dog that can deal with new people after a short period of time and you just continue to introduce you know you use the safeguards that you need to have in place so that you can introduce a new person more often and more often and more often yeah until he gets to the point where he's just like i love new people you know and that'll happen okay i that's used to what, that's what we have to do we have to do it yeah i used to hate a lot of the exercises that uh that my football coach was making do by the time we had done it for a while and i realized that it produced something good it produced something good right. then I got to the point where I was like sweet let's go do some more bleachers you know yeah. And, yeah. and and that made me a crazy person but such is life um, okay. you can always acclimate to things yeah. you know there's people who acclimate to you know when the gunfire starts going off they get all excited and happy you know sometimes those people are called Marines but <laughs> because they, they realize that there is something positive, something that they find positive attached to it. What's the thing with the DVD? Have you watched that? No. I'm just kidding. Yeah. No. I've been mean, using No, actually, Charles, probably don't use it. Don't watch it. Okay. Don't worry about the DVD because... because you know how to use this. <laughs> yeah, if you guys have more questions about that sort of thing, call me. Oh, because well, I, I have, watched, I have oh. watched a bunch of Garmin's... Uh, <clears throat> garment stuff and a lot of it is very good but there's some of it that I it's not that I disagree with it's that it doesn't function with my program okay. and so it, yeah, we don't want to that's that's where picking and choosing from different trainers you know the people who are trying to YouTube train their dog they don't get anywhere is because they um, they they're use each trainer generally has a contained system that all works with everything else that they're doing and so it's not that one is necessarily a better system than the other it's just that they're that everything that i tell you is going to be compatible with everything that i tell you and sometimes that won't be the case and the garmin is pretty good not a hundred percent what about um have you ever read any books by cesar cesar milan um, yeah I'm, I'm a massive cesar milan okay. advocate I um that i am a behaviorist probably more so than I am a trainer. I went to one of the good dog training schools and everything, but I've always been a behaviorist. Yeah. And whenever I went to dog training school, I was focused on all of what, all the behavior that came with it because that's my background. I was a dog groomer's son. So like I learned to speak dog from dog. Mm -hmm. And and so the Caesars got that same that's thing going. And I picked up one of his books and it was about like, what is it called? Be the pack leader or something mm -hmm. like that. And it sounded very similar. Well, a lot so, of the stuff that I have, I mean, yeah, like, I'm sure so. that if he really watched all my videos, he could probably sue me. I mean, like, the, I'm, 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 I'm fairly certain that there's going to be some things that he's well, no, probably got copyrighted that I use because he's right. You know, it like, makes a lot of sense, you know, just reading yeah. bits of it. Just, you know, so it, it was just made it, I didn't want to get confused, though, but it was right. very much in mind of what if, you were doing. If you, yeah, if you, if you follow, if you hear anything from Caesar, chances are it's going to match up with what I've got. 
Okay. Pretty darn close. I mean, because that's the idea. Is I want to be a good behaviorist, and he's a fantastic behaviorist. And that, most most trainers out there don't like Caesar Milan, and that's because they're trainers. Yeah. And it's like the difference between a scientist and a priest. You know, it's like both of them can help you. It's different just ways. they don't yeah, always different. they don't always agree on things, and they don't understand what the other person understands. Whereas a, you know, a trainer is a scientific approach. A behaviorist is more of a relational approach, and uh, and so a lot of the trainers don't like the behaviorist because the science doesn't. They, they don't understand this. They don't understand why. Yeah, they, they don't, just don't understand that he's doing. Yeah, one of one of them is a little bit more uh, concrete. And then the other one is a little more abstract. And, and con people who like concrete don't like abstract. And that's where I like to be the guy who learns both and tells you where those two worlds coexist and what things work in both worlds. So. Okay. All right. Yeah, we got we get we get the treats. Yeah. No. You're good. You're very good. I got him now, boy. What are you gonna do? I got it here, blue. Yeah, there it is. Come on, Bye, blue. I'm following the, the hot dog. Oh, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> like well, yeah. oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I mean, we can do it next week at the same time if you want. Right. Do uh, we want to try to do a dog park thing, or what do you want to try to do? Yeah, I think we should do a dog park thing. We, we found one in, um, where was that? It was uh, Defiance. Which is yeah, a, right outside Defiance. Right outside Defiance. It was a really cool very dynamic dog park that has lots of different spaces and um, it's got different activities <coughs> and different stuff. It's got a lake there um, and um, that might not be a bad spot to do that. I mean, we might, we might start with muzzle just the same, yeah. just to see how things turn out. Um, so you can, I was wondering about that, going in a dog park with a muzzle on. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that I know of any dog parks that don't allow you to have muzzles. A lot of them don't allow you to have leashes. And that's yeah. for a good reason. Yeah. Now we will have the ability to have a leash and let it drag and not hold the dog at the end of the leash, which is the reason they don't want you to do it. They don't want your tension yeah. of your anxiety yeah. causing the dog to go off whenever they sh whenever it shouldn't. Yeah. Um, and that's why they say no leashes. And the dogs teach dogs really well. Yeah. yeah. And okay. that, that might be, but we'll, we'll have to feel it out and oh, see what it is. But if, if nothing else, then we can, all, we can go and do off-leash work outside of the dog park where the presence of these things are or where the presence of these things are uh, it is uh, is still there and and distracting and, and see how he does with that and then we'll take the next step as soon as it's, as soon as it's available but not not before so okay. that we can keep everything safe all right cool all right, good. Thanks all right. Very much. good nice to see meeting you guys you. nice yeah. meeting you guys yeah this was this was very good and I think that you guys can feel free to go through that same